Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is the Prime Investigator Vice Podcast. This is episode 60, I believe. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, becoming maybe a Prime Investigator after high school or shortly thereafter. Is it a good idea? So uh, let's just get this started. This is a PI Advice Podcast. Yeah, boy. everybody doing okay well I'm glad you guys could uh, make the show I know it's been a long time I feel bad about it I, I think I've heard myself say that so many times but you know life what it is but you know a lot of things have interesting the things have happened in between the time that I last did a podcast and now um, and so I'll kind of catch up on that before we get into the content here. Um, I definitely want to get going on on these podcasts again. I, I one of the things uh, news is you know oh, oh well let me stop there. Uh, first of all, if you're new to the show, this is the first episode you're listening to. Um, my name is Andrew. How you doing? Uh, you can go back to the earlier podcasts if you're just getting into the industry or you're interested in it, uh, like one through so many, like six. Um, I provide tips, I do videos, I do the blog, and so if you don't like to listen to me, you can read the stuff, uh, and of course, if you don't want to hear me, uh, well, you're going to have to hear me at some point, uh, you can watch the videos as well. I try to post the videos of the podcast on the YouTube channel. With that being said, so where have I been? Well, uh, again, working, 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 working. Um, one of the interesting things that, that did happen uh, since I've been gone is uh, Google came out with a new algorithm. Um, which kind of messes up the amount of traffic some people get. So some people might be getting more traffic to their websites, uh, some people getting less. And mine got cut in, in uh, just about in half. Um, but that's okay. I wasn't uh, overly concerned about it um, because what ended up happening for some reason, and I don't know why, is I actually have gotten more interaction from the audience. Even though I haven't been podcasting or doing anything, uh, I haven't been blogging or or the videos, um, but yeah, I've gotten more questions and uh, more interaction uh, from the audience, which which is just a crack up. Um, you guys are awesome out there. Um, what else is going on? Uh, a couple milestones uh, that are I just you know I just kind of keep dibs on every now and then. Uh, we are at uh, four five hundred and four thousand video views. We're halfway to a million video views on the Prime Investigator Advice channel. Um, which I'm, I, I just think that's cool. I just think that it's cool that you guys uh, find my videos interesting enough or helpful enough that you'd, you'd watch them, and, uh, and I hope they help you, of course. Um, also, 1,500 subscribers, over 1,500 on the YouTube channel. Um, I, that grows every day. Um, 887 Facebook followers. I know, it, it's not a lot, but uh, it's, it's, it's been a long run for that Facebook <laughs> following on there. Um, I ha I don't post on it a lot. I, I when I do, it's you know, I, it's informative. Maybe it's a little thing that's funny to me, or you know, maybe just to me. Um, uh, right now, I uh, I have a couple things posted on there. Why I'm on here? Uh, one is to a uh, gentleman. Uh, oh, excuse me. Uh, a, a gentleman who uh, is doing this cool video thing he wants to do. He's uh, got a Kickstarter campaign up. And uh, he uh, he wants to interview um, individuals that are former military around the world or around the United States, rather, and uh, and just uh, kind of talk to them about their life after the military. Now, um, you know, there's there's all kinds of different things when people get out. They have, you know, post-traumatic stress disorder, which is something I'm starting to learn a little bit more about, actually, by doing this investigation work. But um, also, you know, uh, everybody comes from different backgrounds into the military and um, – and when they leave, um, you know, a lot of them try to pursue jobs in their in the job that they have. So, like for me, I was in telecommunications. I tried to pursue telecommunications job when I first got out, um, but it, the, the job market was saturated. Well, you know, it was booming, but at the, at the very end, it was saturated and it was coming to a slowdown. And so, I had to choose a different path. Anyways. Um, it's uh, it's interesting. You should watch his video that he has on there. Uh, listen to what he has to say. If you're interested in uh, uh, 
backing him on his Kickstarter to do this this project, this video project. I, I think it's well worthwhile. I, I contributed to it. Um, if you think it's uh, worth doing, I, I would definitely uh, cont contribute to it and uh, tell him hi. Um, what else have we got going on here? Um, so why? Where have I been? Where have I been hiding? Um, it, you know, again, guys, and I wrote about this uh, a long time ago. Maybe I'll put a link to it. It's uh, about work-life balance. And, um, you know, as much as I love doing this, the family and, you know, doing my job, uh, my real job, um, is much more important, as, unfortunately, than, than doing the podcast sometimes. And, uh, and so... I've got to put my attention towards that. And you guys know, and I expect you, I would expect you guys to do the same thing. Um, put your family first. Uh, make sure you still have a job, you know, do your job well. And so that's that's basically where I've been. Um, when, uh, I, I think this is probably the largest hiatus I've had. I, I think maybe the last one I did was in August. Let me, uh, oh, let me see when I posted that. Uh, maybe in August of September, September-ish. So maybe two or three months. Yeah, anyways. So yeah, that's what I've been doing, and I and I always tell you guys that that's more important than anything, and I hope you guys would uh, would agree uh, to put your family first. So uh, what else is going on here? Um, oh, I went. Uh, I don't think I talked about it. I went to we the, every Fourth of July. I go to this thing in Tacoma, and um, and and they have like different things. You know, you know how Ford has their their booth, so they have all their new Ford trucks and. Um, everybody, you know, they have, they put on their stuff, I, you know, go see the car shows and whatever. Uh, but Elio Motors, and I, I talked about this a long time ago on Tech Tuesday. It's this little, uh, well, for me, it'd be a one seater car, but it's like a, just two little seater, uh, car. It's, it's, um, I think it's under, um, it's kind of like a motorcycle, but enclosed. I guess that's the best way to put it. Um, and so, uh, I got to finally see one in person. It was pretty cool. I took a few pictures of it. I didn't stick around too long. I had the family with me, so, you know, they weren't trying to hang around and, you know, whatever, look at that kind of stuff, but I was, so I, I chatted with them for a hot minute and, uh, just asked about the car and it's, it's interesting. Now, of course, um, you know, I, I think I talked about it on the uh, Tech Tuesday podcast. Now, is that a surveillance vehicle? Absolutely not. You cannot, there's no way. I mean, you're like a magician if you could do surveillance in a in a Elio Motors um, vehicle. Um, but with that being said, hold on. It doesn't mean that you can't use a car like that in business in general. Um, you, you ever see? Uh, I don't know. I see it around here in Tacoma. I see like uh, tattoo parlors, right? They they have uh, they they put a stamp on their car, like um, whatever tsunami tattoo. And it's usually like a Humvee or some kind of fancy vehicle uh, to draws your attention to it. And then you see their advertisement on their car like, oh, Tsunami Tattoo. Oh, I better, you know, if I'm ever going to get a tattoo, I'd probably think a Tsunami Tattoo, which, again, this is something I'm bringing from my memory. Um, so, you know, having a kind of a unique car might be a uh, – oh, in fact, I interviewed a guy who was a DJ um, uh, in regarding uh, a claim that he had. And uh, he has this uh, – Again, he's a DJ, and he has this. I'm pretty sure he he's, he's known for this vehicle because it has um, four uh, yeah, four wheels in the back and two wheels in the front. It's an SUV. It's this unique vehicle, whatever. But people know him by that vehicle when he rolls up. I mean, that's just something. I don't think he has advertisement on it, but I don't know. Just something to think about. You know, if you guys ever go down that road, just have a unique vehicle that pops yeah, maybe when uh, if you decide to. Uh, put something on your, you know, like such and such investigations, if that's what you do. And, and that's a whole other conversation I want to talk about, too, by the way, down the road, um, using your, you know, a vehicle in, in this in this industry as advertisement. So, uh, okay, so what else? What else? What else? Oh, so, um, okay, so this is being, it's December 4th, or 5th, excuse me, rather. Um, I had goals. I think I've talked about them before. I think my goal was 100 videos for the year. That's not going to happen. I, I don't have enough time. I can tell you that right now. And I think it was 75 podcasts. Again, it's not going to, I'm not going to make my goal, but that's okay. I, I think uh, I'll, I'll come up with some new goals and uh, um, for next year, you know, a little higher, of course, and uh, I'll try to push those out. Uh, next year, my goal for sure is to put out some sort of course. Um, for you guys, and I'm not sure if it's going to, I mean, there's a couple different options how I want to pursue it, but I think it's time. I mean, there's a lot of uh, other investigators out there putting out courses. Um, 
I've got to figure out how it's going to be priced and and uh, and how I'm going to format it and how I'm going to get you the best information. Uh, but it's going to happen. It's uh, I, I just can't. I've been doing this too long. I got to get you guys something out there. Of course, I'll still put out the free stuff. So don't worry. Uh, what else? Uh, in the future here, in the very near future, I'd like to do some kind of giveaways. Um, nothing that's going to break break the PI Advice Bank, but um, you know, maybe a, a coffee cup or maybe a gadget. Maybe something I've reviewed, uh, so I'll review it. It'll still be brand new, rather, but I, I'll have tested it, and uh, maybe I'll just give that away. Um, and you might get it and be like, "Okay, well, you sent me the one that you said was crap." But I mean, I don't know. I'm just, um, just, just spitballing. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm just throwing it out there. Just thinking about it. Um, yeah. What else? I've got uh, some cool questions from from listeners over the weeks that have kind of generated some, uh, I don't know, some ideas. Um, and I've also been interacting with more private investigators recently. So that also, you know, because sometimes you're kind of a loner in this industry and, and you don't talk to anybody. And uh, uh, it's nice to interact every now and then with other people, get their ideas, get their perspectives and stuff um, on things. Um, so anyways, let's, let's get into this uh, content today. So... Uh, I wrote an article, so if you've already read it, I mean, you might not even want to hear me talk about it anymore, but it's about, uh, you know, becoming a, a private investigator after high school. You know, should you even, should you go that route right away? And so, you know, what I did was talk about it in my article uh, that I wrote way back when <laughs> in regards to, you know, is that the direction you should immediately go after high school? And And so the first thing I would say is, you know, when you when you're in high school, your your thoughts and dreams um, uh, are quite different than than they are 20 years later, right? I mean, um, you and I always bring this up because this was this is the way I was thinking. Like, I'm gonna go do this, and I'm gonna make all this money, and um, and and I think when I got out of high school, it was a big slap in the face of reality. Like, uh, you have no skills, psh, you don't have a college degree. Psh, um, you know what else? It was like you're gonna make seven, or no, rather, it was like five fifty dollars, five dollars fifty cents an hour, and psh, you're gonna deliver, you know, pizzas. Um, and when you paint houses, psh, you're gonna make seven dollars an hour. Again, this is tw- this is about twenty years ago, but um, yeah, I mean, you know, you come out thinking you're gonna do one thing, you're gonna, you know do any job and, and have these skills. But in reality, you don't. You, you're young and um, as smart as you are, you know, in school, you still have a lot to learn in life. And so I, I don't know that I even had an occupation in mind when I got out of high school. I, I, I don't remember. But if you know my story, um, uh, what was it, about three hour, three years after sputtering around, uh, uh, I don't know, not doing much of anything of productive, um, I joined the Army for, for reasons of my father. So, um, what else here? Um, okay. So occupations, right? So, you know, when I remember my wife, she wanted to be a, um, Oh, what are those people? She wanted to work in a funeral home. I know. Right. She wanted to be the, uh, embalmer. Is that the word? I don't know. Anyways. So she's at high school and she's telling everybody, I want to embalm people. She wants to work for a funeral home in that area. And I'm like, oh, for goodness sake. Sorry, guys. I'm like, that's gross. Well, I mean, really? That's this job out of all the jobs you could possibly choose for what on earth? I mean, what? Why would you? I mean, I don't know. This is my wife. I don't know. Anyways, uh, you know, she got another job doing other things. And, uh, and she's moved up in the world uh, since then. Uh, but uh, I, I don't know. I don't know that she still wants to pursue that anymore. She has a family. And um, that's not, I mean, at least we don't talk about that. We haven't talked about it in a long time. Um, I knew other people that wanted to be like, um, I remember this one girl I went to high school. I mean, you know, listen, you, you went probably went to school with somebody who says, I'm going to do X when I get out of high school. I'm going to be a teacher. I want to be a college professor. I'm going to do something. And then when it gets out and, and real world hits them, the world, the real world, um, it's just not the same. And and they don't, or they get into it and they're like, "This sucks." Like, I don't want to do this job. And so, uh, anyways, that's just something to think about. Um, 
I mean, even today. I mean, uh, if I said, uh, Andrew, do you know what you want to be when you grow up? I don't know. I don't know. I, I know that uh, I want to just uh, make lots of money. I guess I'm still a kid in that sense. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I, I enjoy this. I enjoy what we're doing right now. I enjoy podcasting and teaching. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. Whatever. Let's move on. How about that? Um, one of the things when you get out of high school and even, and even in some respects college um, you don't receive uh, respect, or or you you don't emit a sense of authority, if 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 that makes any sense. Um, when I go right now, like currently, when I do interviews, and this has happened a few times now, I've heard um, um, people have said, you know, you're, you're very intimidating, um, or, um, or my demeanor is intimidating. Like maybe it's the beard or. The bald head. I don't know. I I don't look this way to intimidate anybody. I really don't. I I shave my head because I'm going bald. Uh, uh, I have a beard uh, because right now I think it kind of help, hides my double chin. I mean that's the reality of it. Like I do like the beard, but um, that's that's why my look is my look. Uh, and uh, and if I don't shave, uh, it makes me look even older. And I've got you know I don't know got the whole. Ronald McDonald thing going on in the back of the head. So um, I, my, that's not my intention. My intention isn't to uh, intimidate anybody or or demand respect or anything like that. In fact, when I interview people, I'm trying to get them to lighten up. Like, hey, listen, you're not under oath, okay? I'm just uh, – I'm an inf- I'm, I, I, dumb my, I dumb everything down in a sense. Like, hey, this is what we're trying to find out. I'm an information collector. And I'm here to ask you questions. Like you're not going to jail. In fact, I just uh, I just did an interview with another investigator um, uh, at the store, and she was she was very like she was scared. She thought she's in trouble. I'm like, no, 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 you're not in trouble. We just got to find out what happened. Like uh, we need to get your version of what had happened, and you know you, you didn't provide a you know a statement, so that's why we're here. And even her coworkers were, you know, joking with her, like, oh, you're going to jail or something like that, you know. But it, that wasn't the, that wasn't the case at all. And so I try to ease their concerns. And um, anyways, but uh, when you're younger, though, you you don't um, – well, first of all, you don't you – don't, you don't still don't know a lot in life, right? Um, but your perceptions, like um, when you're younger, maybe even interviewing people, um, it's like, um, yeah, this is – there's this kid trying to interview me, like – about something serious or whatever, you you might not be able to get the same respect or even the same answers, or they might blow you off, which even at my age um, still happens. Um, I don't think it happens as much, uh, you know, or it doesn't happen as often maybe to, to me as to maybe other people, but it still happens. I mean, people are still going to be jerks and blow you off. So, um, and it's also, you know, um, harder to be taken seriously. Uh, just just in general when you're younger, especially out of high school, especially because, you know, we're still immature, right? Um, another thing to, you know, when you got to think about when you come out of high school is you might not even be old enough to become a private investigator. I know a lot of say, states require you to be 21 years of age, 21 years old of age, whatever. Uh, so that actually might slow you down um, in your pursuit, which I'm okay with because um, personally, I mean, I haven't got to that point yet, but... Uh, and I, you know, I think this industry's. Um, uh, I mean, I think 21 years old is a, is a good starting point for them to allow people to become proud of this because there's a lot of sensitive information that's released to people, and uh, you gotta have someone that's mature enough to to take that kind of information. Okay, so one of the things that you guys coming out of high school, early into college, whatever, is life gets in the way. Okay. Um, uh, with about a, a a year left in my army career, I met my wife, uh, and this is kind of this is kind of my. I think I've told the story before, maybe in broken parts, but um, I, uh, you know, w- once I knew I was going to marry my wife, once I after I'd met her, uh, I started you know hustling, hustling hard, right? I want to pay for this wedding and support my wife and and whatnot. And so I'm, you know, I you guys probably heard me talk about the I had the two jobs and and whatever miserable doing the two jobs. Anyways, but I was also applying for police departments and stuff like that because um, at the time I had considered being a police officer, and so I did. And uh, I had made it all the way through the California Highway Patrol uh, testing process, and and after it was done with the process way back when, um, it was like okay, well we'll call you in when there's an open thing for the academy. 
And the California Highway Patrol has a live-in academy. You got to stay there and be on site, kind of like, a, well, kind of, maybe kind of like a boot camp. <laughs> so, um, so, so I take the test uh, and I pass everything, and I'm waiting. And, and meanwhile, I've I've uh, married my wife. I've been involved in loss prevention, uh, doing that. Um, and I get this call. My, my wife's pregnant now, and 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 about to have the baby in a couple months. And they say, hey. Hey, uh, just to let you know, we're having the academy in such and such date, and uh, and I remember, I remember the date fell right around the time my daughter was supposed to be born, and so I had to measure, I had to take in some factors here. You know, I had a young wife that uh, was far away from her family. We were in California, and she was in Washington, and um, and then she was going to have a baby, and I didn't want to a miss the birth of my child, and I didn't want to leave my wife hanging, so. I had to make a decision, and um, excuse me, I wasn't in loss prevention. I was in a, I was a prime investigator by then. Um, but anyways, I had to make a decision that um, I, I wasn't going to go forward with that. Uh, and I was kind of mad too at the time. I remember, I was like, you know, you know, freaking takes you guys, you know, x amount of time to like get this going. Like, what am I supposed to like stop everything? I don't know. I was mad. I was a little little miffed at the time. Anyway, so I. I didn't go to the academy, and uh, I've got to be there from birth of my my daughter, and um, and then things you know things changed. Now looking back, uh, I it still you know I think everything happens for a reason, um, especially in my own life. Uh, um, when things don't go right, I think there's a reason behind it. I don't know what that reason. There's a bigger purpose. I don't know. I, and I and everything. I mean, I didn't go to the academy. Well, maybe there's a reason for that. Maybe you know. Maybe things wouldn't have gone too well in my marriage if I had gone to the academy and left my wife hanging, um, you know, or I mean, I don't know. I don't know. But what I do know is, is that um, I've got to spend a, a ton of time with my kids um, more recently because of this job, because of being a prime investigator, even though there were times where I wasn't. So, um, you know, things change, guys. You know, um, would my wife be probably happier if I had a steady paycheck and um, uh, a relatively steady schedule? Probably. I mean, um, but who knows? I mean, you just, you just, uh, things, things happen, things change. So even though my, my original career path was, yeah, be a cop and probably retire from that, um, it didn't work out that way. Um, backup plans. The last thing I would want to see, um, cause I think you need backup plans. The last thing I want to see is someone uh, get out of high school or, or just thereafter and then jump in the prime investigation world and then, uh, do this with blinders, right? And not, um, not have a backup plan. Like if, if all you know is one thing, this goes for any occupation. If all you know is one thing, you're, you're, you're crippling yourself in the workforce, right? Um, and I mean, uh, even I had the benefit of, uh, you know, when I got out of high school, I, I dabbled in a bunch of things, but um, I, I was a painter for several years and painted houses. Um, I was uh, I was partners in a landscaping business for a little bit, uh, for a, uh, I think it was about a year. Um, of course, I do blogging now, but that's that wasn't doing that then. Um, and then, but it, also. I've I've picked up a bachelor's degree during the time I've been a prime investigator. So I you know again I have fallbacks. If this thing doesn't work out, um, I've got other options. You know, there's plenty of jobs out there to just say, oh, you got a bachelor's degree? Oh, okay, come on in. Yeah, you know. Um, and I mean, of course, there's a lot of people with bachelor's degree, but at least that's an option. I just don't want to see you guys uh, get out of high school and not. Not you know, uh, exp- I don't know expand, expand your horizons of e- learn different things, um, learn a trade. Uh, you know, I, I'd love to see you go to college, um, continue to educate yourself, find you know a, a side job, a side hustle, so- something. Just don't go into the private investigation world and not know anything else. Okay, you want to keep keep learning, whether it be before or, or during or after, whatever. Just uh, don't corner yourself. That's my main concern for you guys. One of the last things is, is um, you know, I've seen this just throughout my time in the industry is, is you know, this, this, this lifestyle, generally speaking, isn't good for your health. I mean, of course, you can make good choices in eating and, and, uh, and, and better time management for exercising and whatnot, but 
um, it's not just your physical health, it's your mental health. You're, a lot of the times you're, you're alone. So you're, you're researching alone. Um, uh, you know, if you're doing surveillance, you're alone. You're just, it's a very isolated kind of job sometimes. Um, you know, and there's, of course, there's different aspects where you're interviewing people and things like that. And, and you're pulling, you know, you're, there are different aspects of the job where you're still interacting with people. But generally speaking, it's not like you're sitting in, a, in an office where you're interacting with other people or, you know, my wife's going to meetings every day, always interacting with different people. Um, this, this job doesn't always promote that. Um, most of my uh, interaction comes when I get home and it's with the family and the kids and whatnot. Um, so yeah, just, just keep that in mind. I mean, if you don't like being a loner, this might not be the best job for you in some regards. Um, th- it doesn't bother me too much, but, uh, definitely something to think about. And, uh, one of the things I just want to go ahead and read one of the, um, responses that I got when I posted this, uh, from, uh, from Tanner, who's a private investigator who's been, who's been reading the, the PI advice stuff for quite a while. And I, I always appreciate when he contributes, Uh, In the comment section, he said, hey, man, this is a great post with several good points. He says, I started as a PI at the age of 19. George's age requirements were a bit lower in most or George's age requirement was a bit lower than most states. Okay, I had gone to a vocational school where I majored in legal and protective services and had some college under my belt. I met my mentor in 2006, and I guess I, I impressed him in some way. He took me under his wing and taught me the ropes. I had a hard time being taken seriously at first, but. Uh, because of my age. Again, he was 19. Um, But that stopped uh, once everyone or people realized I studied hard, ate, slept, and breathed the job. I took every case that came in that no one wanted. And as a result, I closed some of the company's hardest cases. When dealing with clients, I had to find ways to look uh, and sound older. Again, as you can see, some of his challenges. Uh, Usually, I would try to avoid face-to-face interaction. Um, and that might have, uh, well, I'm just kind of interjecting into a statement here. That might have been phone, a lot of phone contact. Uh, he said, I made the uh, decision to stay in the private sector when I turned 21, and now I own my own agency. There are so many specialties to go between that I, uh, when I get burnt out uh, on one, I can um, burnt out on, I can uh, reinvent myself and learn another. I've been able to cover everything from insurance claims to homicides and currently do high volume in corporate fraud, missing persons, and counter surveillance. If you want it to happen, you can make it work. That was the statement. So, Tanner, again, uh, thank you, uh, first of all, uh, uh, for uh, responding to the the post. I appreciate it. Um, You know, this doesn't just apply to... Um, private investigators or, or, or those just out of high school. I mean, it really, uh, some of these points that I, I touched on is, it's just, in general, generally speaking, think about them before you get in. Um, I, I, I just want the, want the best for everybody that, that uh, is contemplating the this industry. And uh, especially when you're young, um, I, I'd rather see, see you build up skills uh, in a variety of things uh, versus just jump into one thing right away uh, without knowing maybe what you really want. I mean, you could, but then, and who knows, you could find out very quickly um, that, that, that this job isn't for you and you can move on. But, um, you know, it, should, should you, after high school, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's all going to be up to you. I mean, uh, I'm just one voice. Talk to your parents if you're just in high school. Uh, confer with your friends. Um, you know, um, and inevitably it's going to be your choice. Uh, so yeah, that is uh, that is it for today. Um, I don't have much else to say about this topic. I could just ramble, and then you can listen to that, or I can cut it off, and I can th- think of what the the next podcast is going to be, and I can put that out soon. Um, I hope you guys had a great Thanksgiving and you guys were able to take time off with your families. Um, I for sure took that time off, um, was not going to be working that day. Well, I take that back. I did do a little bit of work, but it was after dinner. So, um, the the Seahawks won. So that was, that's always important. And, uh, yeah, it's been good. So I will leave you with that and, uh, I will make loud, uh, noises with the computer and you will listen to those and, uh, Oh, there it is. And then I will uh, sign out with fun music. This is a PI Advice Podcast. Yeah, boy.
Yeah, boy. All right. So, yeah, there you have it. That's my uh, rant for the day. I uh, just want to thank you guys for all the uh, questions and support. And um, I got something fun to share next time with you. <laughs> I'm actually looking forward to sharing it. Um, again, I've got great listeners and, uh, and supporters of the podcast and the, and the whole PI advice thingy going on here. So uh, I'll definitely come back and have a good topic. And uh, you guys be safe out there. And uh, yeah, whatever. Take care.